What's going on, everybody here? This is your boy King Gabe once again. They uh just finished uh recording the home movie reaction that you guys I'm pretty sure have seen by now. Uh, as of seeing this video, um, yep, uh, same same day recording for the two videos, but obviously they're not being uploaded in the same day. <laughs> so, yeah, um, yeah, sort of like uh, a lot of YouTubers I've noticed, you know. Um, a lot of times, like, like, see, I'm wearing the same thing. Uh, a lot of times, they do, like, several videos within, like, say, that one day or one night or however they record it. Um, and, but when you, but when you see them being, you know, uploaded, uh, they be coming up sometimes, like, one at a time or something like that. Or, just all depends on how their editing do, but, you know. <laughs> but obviously, with my, but obviously, you're not seeing all of this in one day, so. Anyway, <laughs> didn't mean to ramble about that. So uh, let's uh, dive right into the long, very long awaited Yamiko Novel One book update. Yes, this is first update. I'm sitting right here in front of my laptop. As you can see, this is the first official update of the first novel. Um, I know, uh, and there's still, uh, we still got more. Uh, history videos like uh, with some of the with the, some of the main human characters that are being introduced so far like we did previously with Hiko and Samuel um, probably got to do uh, one with of course uh, uh, with a few other characters uh, so that's definitely in the works uh, as well as you know what we've previously done with the plush toy that are being anthropomorphic animal characters as well so but we haven't done a book update because of my very long procrastination with it but thanks to my recent vacation that I'm on the last day of my vacation as I'm recording this and the other video I've recorded um, really has uh, been a big help of getting a lot more of this you know book done to make up for the long procrastination as well as the other videos that I've been you know putting up on the channel to keep you guys entertained while I'm doing all this <laughs> so Yep, so now, uh, and looking forward to finishing this book by the end of the year. That is my goal uh, before this year is over. Despite, you know, I got, I know we got the holiday craze. That's going to keep a lot of us busy. But I do want to have this done before the year is over at least. Uh, you know, rough draft in it. And then, you know, after having it done, you know, have it edited. And the only thing, you know, be left to do is, you know, you know, have, you know, edit it, proofread, stuff like that. And then sent off to uh, be published. But I do, but yeah, my goal is to have the rough draft at least fully written and ready for all of that before this year is over. So sometime next year, you, well, we will be getting the first book published. So yeah. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, let's give you an update on what we got here. And uh, like before, uh, definitely like, share, subscribe, uh, you know, leave some comments. Buy some of our other available books that are already out, as well as support us on Patreon. Also, shout out to EJ the Supreme. Yep. So, um, yep, definitely for being our first Patreon. And uh, another reason to sign up as a Patreon so you can get some shout outs too, especially for the $5 shout out. Yes, um, yes, $5, $5 or more, you definitely get yourself mentioned in these videos. Uh, as well as some other perks, uh, check out the titers, you know, the title list so you can see what all you can get uh, for the different, you know, pledges that you make. So, without further ado, let's dive right in. Uh, you may have cookbook one. Um, at one point, I was titling it Brownie and Hiko. Uh, and I think there were a few other title ideals I had at first, but the title that I'm settling on now, which is uh, should be the official title, the Dangerous Supermarket. Um, that title is actually based on a dream I had, uh, as well as also uh, mo the, the story itself. Uh, most of it. Uh, there's and there's gonna there's some other stuff mixed in it, but the main um, the main plot of it, uh, the Dangerous Supermarket of the title, is pretty much based uh, from a dream I had uh, where. A friend of mine, when well, we were in, back in middle school in the seventh grade, we were watching Digimon Adventure 2, 
Uh, we were stuck inside of a Walmart that appeared out of nowhere. Uh, and there was some weird stuff happening. And the reason I mentioned Digimon Zero 2, because I took that dream I had, kept it in memory, and made it into a Digimon adventure where we go into uh, called Super Danger Mart, Super uh, Danger Walmart, and we go inside there, and there was a bunch of uh, evil Digimon in there we had to face. Uh, me and Quintus had to save, yeah, that was his name, yeah. Uh, we had to save the other Digidestant that had gotten stuck in there by a villain that I uh, imagined back then that wasn't a Digimon. He was from an old video game, Star Tropics 2, uh, Zoda. Yeah, so, and he was using dark patches to control the other Digimon. Yeah, so I like to have the Digimon Emperor uh, used um, dark spirals or dark rings. And before, like I say, keeping this family friendly, um, yeah, dark patches, that's, don't, don't, don't make anything of this. That's, that, as I say, it's, um, not, as I just because I know there's some people out there that will try to, you know, kind of make this into something not so kid friendly. So, yeah, <laughs> don't get no ideals there. As I say, uh, and, and also, again, keep it family friendly in the comment section. All right, so, uh, so the first, so going into the, uh, what I've written so far, uh, first chapter, Welcome to Yamiko. Uh, basically, um, the main two human characters, Hiko, uh, Hikoji Makuro, but everybody calls him Hiko, uh, him and his new friend Samuel. Um, so it's established that I think, um, cause I put his new friend, um, I think it's going to be established that they have just kind of met maybe, um, I would say they probably have known each other for at least a few weeks, uh, a few weeks and everything. Um, thing is, uh, his Hiko's mother um, had re has probably recently become friends with, uh, excuse me, Samuel's mother, who is a uh, police officer. Uh, Hiko's mother is a school teacher, which actually is based off of me in real life. My mother was. Uh, is an actual school teacher. She's retired from it, but yeah, that she's taught. Uh, she has done teaching uh, for a very long time. Uh, and Samuel, being based off one of my cousins, uh, his mother uh, is also retired from being uh, from police work. Yes, yeah, so she uh, she's been a police uh, officer for a long time. Yeah, so yep, yeah, uh, definitely uh, was some good references there. Uh, they are seven in this series, uh, starting off, uh, and just a spoiler alert, this is actually taking place in 1995, when I actually, when I actually was seven. Um, my cousin that Samuel's based off of is actually younger than me, but I just made the characters the same age, to, uh, for the sake of the story. Um, Hiko tells Samuel all about... Yumiko, uh, his big papa actually introduced him to this world. Uh, Yumiko, uh, being a manifestation of dreams and imagination, um, it's actually a combination of two Japanese words that means dreams and imagination. So, good little wordplay there. Uh, Hiko explains little details about what's all in Yumiko. Uh, then he also tells um, Samuel about uh, why they're here. They're finna go visit. Uh, Brownie, of course, so uh, he talks, uh, he mentions about, you know, a few things that Brownie has done, um, uh, and just as they're going to go look for him, um, this little girl named Flora shows up, uh, offering to, uh, lead them to Brownie. <laughs> Samuel kind of tries to flirt with her. Uh, this is actually before Samuel meets Angela, um, as, um, yeah, this before, uh, before he meets Angela, um, yeah, there's a few other that he's run across there. So, back, um, uh, and while that's going on, uh, you, there is a photo shoot going, about to take place with, um, uh, Anna, the, uh, the pink, remember, uh, Anna, the little pink bear that I gave this voice to, the voice of Holy Audrey, ever so much. <laughs> Yeah, the one that had that voice actually spoke to you guys on video <laughs> as her. <laughs> so, uh, 
yeah, she's in. Uh, so the next scene, yes, yeah, um, her arriving for her photo shoot uh, for is a trying on different Sunday wear at the Barnhart City Convention Center. That's the main city where Brownie and all and most of his friends stay at Barnhart City. Um, actually, a uh, funny story how I got that name Barnhart was pretty much just from a dictionary that said Barnhart on it. <laughs> sort of like how Dragon Ball Z, they say the creator of Dragon Ball Z, pretty much uh, all the names that he gave his characters uh, came from stuff in his refrigerator. <laughs> it's kind of an interesting uh, story there. Um, and of course she has her siblings with her, um, the little bears that I also show in her history video. Uh, Kevin and Karen and also a little Camille which is a little uh, little yellow chick uh, with the Easter bunny ears there and so they're all there there's a funny joke in there of why they're late for the photo shoot because Kevin tried to put uh, Camille's little headband uh, in the washing machine and one thing Karen points out to him like it's supposed to be hand washed and Kevin's like, that's exactly what I did. Before I stuck it in the machine, I washed my hands. <laughs> that was actually a joke from the Fresh Prince there. I actually got from, uh, from Jazz uh, when he he did something like that to Will Suit. Jazz, what did you do to my jacket? You told me to get it clean, so I washed it. <laughs> oh, oh, no, it wasn't Will Suit. It was Carlton's. Uh, yeah, he did that to Carl one of Carlton's outfits. Uh, he's a jazz. The instructions clearly say hand wash. That's exactly what I did. Before I put it in the machine, I washed my hands. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> that was, I thought that joke was kind of funny. I put it in there to sort of thought it'd give the twins a little bit of a banter for that scene there. Uh, Anna, of course, breaks them up. And they all get ready for the photo shoot. Um, they meet up with Ace and Silverstone of Silverstone Industries. Um, Ace and Silverstone is pretty much going to be, um, you know, like the Kingpin from Spider-Man, the animated Spider-Man series. Ah, hello, and how are you today? My name is Wilson Fitz, also known as the Kingpin. <laughs> I'll have you know that only half of my body mass is fat. The other half is a muscle. <laughs> Yeah, so that guy, yeah, it's, it's sort of it's based off of that character. Uh, he's actually and a lot and a lot of the characters uh, in Yamiko are anthropomorphic animals. Uh, there prob there are some other human characters in Yamiko too. Uh, but but yeah, there's a lot of anthropomorphic animals. Um, Ace and Silverstone is a anthropomorphic gorilla. <laughs> so imagine the kingpin as a big gorilla <laughs> with that voice. <laughs> I guess sort of be like Gorilla Grodd from DC Comics there. <laughs> so, um, he's there um, sponsoring the photo shoot and everything. Uh, he makes a special request for it. And then um, over at the fire station where Brownie and his friends are. So, uh, Brownie, Dash, Brownie Brown, Dash Tail Evans, uh, Billy Webster, and Gerald Miller are all there. Um... And you have uh, Frederick Fluffleton Camels, a.k.a. Mr. Fluffles, uh, Casey's little bear that's in the thumbnail of, a video, of one of the videos on here. Um, and also, uh, there's a short on Mr. Fluffles with uh, Casey doing his voice. Hello, I am Mr. Fluffles. I'm curious about Brownie. Really like to meet him someday. And Mr. Fluffles did get to meet Brownie. Uh, not only just in this series, but in real life. Yep, uh, that's they took a picture together. Uh, I think I still have the picture just in case y'all didn't see it. Uh, it's in here. Let's see, where are you at here? Yeah, here we are. Yep, so they actually did get to meet each other. Um, last Sunday when we went to, when we was at church together. Yeah, they took a picture together. So... Yep, so in this in this Yumiko story, Mr. Fluffles is the sensei and also the of course the boss of the firefighters. Uh but they also at the firehouse, uh, not only do they, you know, 
you know, the usual of fighting fires and stuff, but they also sometimes go on missions, uh, because Brownie is, uh, and some of his friends are sort of like the defenders of Barnhart City, uh, pretty much their town heroes, um, kind of like a Tony Stark Iron Man, kind of, um, so there's a new, they have a new firefighter, um, at this moment, which is Emily Landego. At first, she was going to be the secretary for the mayor, but I changed that, um, thought, uh, because I wanted to give, um, pretty much all of them more character. Matter of fact, Mr. Fluffles was actually just going to be Brownie's best friend, pretty much, uh, pretty much like Rhodey to Iron Man, but this actually gives him more character, being a sensei. Uh, I kind of imagine him talking like Splinter from the Ninja Turtles. You will sit now. You must have patience, my son. I am with you. I love you, my sons. Take great care. <laughs> yeah, so having that voice there, <laughs> that would be pretty cool. You know, Mr. Fluffle does this, Hey, Sensei! Help! Gotta... They, so yeah, that really gives them some character. Um, in the scene that's here in the book, uh, they, Mr. Fluffles has, or Sensei Fluffles uh, has Dashtail and Emily go first to do some one-on-one -on -one sparring. Dashtail tries to show off uh, his Dash Foo, <laughs> which uh, kind of something I got from the comic book version of Yumiko when Zayden was like, "I bet you can't see my Zay Foo." Uh, something he did in the rough draft of the comic that didn't make it into the comic. So here we got it with Dashtail. You're like, what in the world is Zay is Dash Foo? <laughs> He's like, it's the, it's the great. It goes beyond, it goes beyond the highest skill level, uh, with a with a little style. The beyond the highest level of skill imaginable with a little style. And he's like dancing back and forth like a little rabbit. Uh, he said, like, "You won't see it. You won't see it. You won't. You won't see it." Oh, wait. And, but and, but Emily blocks the first one. Uh, he tries to do like a surprise karate chop, but Emily blocks it and flips Dash Tail. Looks like I saw it coming. But then Dash Tail sort of um, gets Emily really agitated when he says, "Oh, you quick little kitty cat! I'm quicker. <laughs> watch my feet. Watch my feet. What the what the my feet? I'm gonna come on with it. I'm gonna come on with it." <laughs> That's a little something from uh, Nutty Professor uh, with Reggie when he was uh, when he got mad at Buddy. He's like, yeah, silence! I can't take this stuff no more. You don't talk about me now, boy. I tried to be peaceful, but now." It's time for me to karateize your face. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Of course, I know he said something else, but I'm keeping it family friendly. Uh, so, yeah, that, yeah, sort of like that. And he was doing, and yeah, same thing Emily said about, um, I saw it coming and Mr. Fluffle tried to tell him, you know, you shouldn't announce your attacks. I said the same thing when I saw Reggie. Uh, going one on one with Buddy Love because he was like, Watch my feet, watch my feet. I'm gonna come, come, come on with it. I'm gonna come, come on with it. I was like, Dude. Shut up! <laughs> you keep talking, he's gonna see you coming. Just do it. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and my and one of my uncle say, Shut up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> because he was trying to tell a story, and everybody kept talking over him. And eventually, just so happened, it was me that come up there to say something because yeah, everybody was interrupting him. But just so happened, it was me. Like, hey, hey, Unc, Unc, shut up! <laughs> Everybody go, ooh, ooh. <laughs> it gets pretty, it gets pretty wacky around my family at dinner time. Uh, family dinners. <laughs> so anyway, uh, so yeah, um, yeah, one thing, Emily does not like the little kitty cat comment. Um, which is also a reference to Lola Bunny from Space Jam, uh, which she was referencing a movie too. Uh, don't ever call me doll. So one thing she says to him, don't ever call me a little kitty cat. And yeah, her anger, she has, she has a temper. Um, and there's a backstory behind that. Um, her temp, um, she ends up saying, um, like, don't ever call me a little kitty cat. Very angry. And ends up swinging him into the wall a little too hard there because, yeah, it ends up hurting Dashtail's back. Um, 
They, of course, Dashdale is okay. He just needs to, you know, recover his back from the hit there because it kind of hurt him pretty bad. Um, the alarms go off, and there's a beyond fire emergency in the downtown area. Um, so, originally, now, originally it was supposed to be Brownie. Uh, yeah, it is Brownie and Gerald. Uh, Gerald, by the way, um, being the Gator, of course, um, that sadly did not get a history video because, like I say, you know, I didn't really have uh, much of, you know, like, you know, stuff that happened with him before this series, yeah, like the other animals. Sorry about that, Gerald, there. But at least, you know, we are talking about you here in the book, so, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll do it. We'll give it. Like, don't worry. We, we, got, we, got you. we got you, man. We got you. Um, Dashtail, of course, wants to come. Now, originally, it was going to be that Dashtail was showboating too much, and he was kind of inexperienced, so the sen so Sensei Fluffles did not let him go out because uh, he wasn't ready for it. I changed that. Uh, so this is so the official thing is, uh, since Emily uh, swung him and, he, and his back is hurt, um, he doesn't dash... Um, Mr. Fluffles does not want to risk Dashdale going out there with a hurt back. Um, yeah, cause, so he has gone on missions like this with, with this with Brownie, but he just had to sit this one out because of his back there. And, of course, Dashdale is very upset about this. Um, sort of like uh, Bruce Wayne Batman, you know, uh, Batman, uh, he be getting hurt. He be getting hurt bad at times, and he still be wanting to get up, uh, like in the episode of Justice League, uh, when he got bit by a uh, viper with the snake venom, that venom at, that venom almost killed you. You're staying here. Superman walks out the room. Then Batman just gets up, <laughs> and the Martians try like, I know how you must feel. You're the only one of us that doesn't have any powers, but we are only trying to help. If you could just realize, I'm taking the shuttle. Unless you would like to try and stop me. No. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, and to think, the Martian Manhunter, psychic power, a psychic-powered Martian alien, just backs down and doesn't do anything to stop Batman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, because he's Batman. <laughs> you know, that's always the answer. <laughs> and I don't care who gets mad at me for saying that, because he's Batman. Yeah, I say it. <laughs> So, <laughs> anywho, uh, so Dashtail has to stay there with uh, to rest his back uh, and re stay with the other students and rest. Uh, Emily kind of does apologize a little bit, uh, still telling him, you know, she didn't really like the kitty, the little kitty cat comment. Um, so, second chapter, that's all in chapter one, by the way. Uh, second chapter, uh, Hiko and Samuel, they... Uh, they uh there's another little girl that comes it's actually going to be revealed that this is naomi so uh naomi is in the first book um she's enjoying herself in the barnhart forest uh just sort of you know enjoying the beauty and everything um and then all of a sudden she gets uh while she's busy um you know playing around in here um there is a a little a witch which I'm I'm, announce, I'm enunciating it now, so y'all won't mistaken it for something else. Uh, w i t c h. <laughs> yes, just to let you know. <laughs> just to let you know, and also YouTube caption. Don't don't make me don't don't put something else under under what I'm saying. And make people think I'm saying something else. So, uh, yeah, it's a it's a, um about the same age as Hiko and uh Samuel, um. Her name is going to be revealed in here. Uh, it's actually Shanice. So, uh, Shanice uh, comes uh, out and he's like, time for my plan to begin. And she teleports um, Naomi. Um, she's going to, where she teleports her, ends up being um, in the same area that Hiko and Samuel about to end up. Um, you get a little bit back at the fire station. Um, turns out. Uh, mayor Rosefield, Anna's dad, yep, her dad's the mayor, um, Cedric Rosefield, which is actually based off of a mayor that we had here in Shreveport, uh, some years ago, uh, so he gets, so yeah, he tells Brownie and his friends that, um, Anna's in trouble, 
uh, during the, their photo shoot a bunch of uh, knit hats, knit, uh, say uh, K N I T knit hats. You know, like what you wear in the winter. Uh, but they have, but actually, there are some knit hats that can be worn in the summertime too. Uh, this is a different material than the winter ones. Um, but a bunch of them turned into monsters and became a giant monster and grabbed Anna. And now they're rampaging through the downtown area. So, of course, the brownie is called to uh, fight uh, these monsters. Uh, him and Gerald, they go into action in uh, fighter planes. Um, which actually... Uh, the fighter planes, uh, I think Brownie has a Lockhead Martin 22 Raptor. And uh, Gerald uh, ends up getting in a Euro Fighter Typhoon. Um, Brownie's uh, uh, plane is called Paper Eater. And the other one for Gerald is called Space Bite. So they go into those, uh, they go into action. Uh, sort of makes me think of SWAT cats that used to come on. Um, Back at the, uh, uh, Billy explains about what all they can do. Uh, at the store, uh, the little girl Flora has led uh, Hiko and Samuel to an abandoned cola mart. Yep, um, so thus forth the title of this book, The, Super da the Dangerous Supermarket. Um, she tells them that Brownie is in the store. At least she thinks that Brownie's in the store, but she don't realize that he's not in the store. Uh, and they're like, this place looks deserted. Uh, and turns out he's thinking that Br she's thinking that Brownie is in there investigating suspicious activity going on. And she tells the boys, you know, maybe I should wait out here until he finishes. But he goes, Sammy, like, ah, oh, we can go in there now. If he's in there, it should be all right. Um, so they go in there, you know, despite her warning. Um, and sure enough, when they get in there, the danger begins. Um, there's some uh, cash registers that come after them, shooting coins and stuff. Uh, as well as also, we find out uh, Naomi is in the receiving room of this store. And she ends up getting chased by these zombies that have, uh, that, you know, they, the, where their eyes should be. Instead of, the, instead of, you know, seeing like eyes, it's just black sockets with teeth in them. And that's kind of gruesome, I know, but um, I actually had a dream once, a nightmare actually, when I was a little kid, I was looking for my mom at the school she uh, the school she worked at, I was up there looking for her, and I went to a janitor, I was like, excuse me, have you seen my mom? And the janitor turned around, and instead of, you know, where his eyes should be, he had teeth in the place of his eyes, and it was like, gah! <laughs> as, uh, as I was telling a lot of this stuff to uh, little Nisha and her sister. Gabe, what is up with you and your dreams when you're a kid? <laughs> I don't know. It just happened. <laughs> so, so then of course downtown, you know, people are fleeing in panic of the giant hat monster. Um, Brownie and Gerald show up and actually are able to defeat the hat monster and get Brownie free. I mean, get Anna free. A little too easy, though. Um, this uh, the battle with the hat monster is actually based off of when I was. Uh, I think I mentioned this in a previous video, but I'm saying it again. When I uh, was when I uh, was in the class, when my classroom once, I had of course stuck my plush toys with me <laughs> in my backpack. So uh, we had finished. I think we had finished a test early or something like that. So we were waiting for the other students to finish. So I pulled out, I had Brownie with me in class, and I put a, I uh, had this little woodland knit hat, and I took it off, and I gave Brownie one of my pencils, and made it like he was fighting the hat with the pencil, like the pencil was a sword, like, <laughs> You know some of y'all have probably done something like that. <laughs> so... Yep, so that happens. Um, third chapter, danger, escalating danger. Uh, Hiko and Samuel, they get away from the cash registers, but then um, when they try to hide on the frozen food aisle, there's a bunch of these skeletons, excuse me, that come after them. By the way, the cash registers were actually 
also a reference with the Digimon Adventure and in, in the abandoned Super Walmart, Walmart Super Center, where there were actually cash register mods. <laughs> Coins attack! <laughs> Except we didn't have Digimon to take care of them. So, um, so then all of a sudden, some skeletons appear, uh, preparing to breathe fire at the boys. Um, he goes like, uh, you know, since they're on the frozen food aisle, man, I wish we could freeze the skeletons like ice cream. And suddenly the freezer doors open and ice cream is fired at the skeletons, freezing them in place. And then they all break apart, falling on the ground. It's like, did I do that? Did I do that? <laughs> little Steve Urkel reference. <laughs> Yep. So then, of course, more skeletons show up, um, and when they see the boys, they they uh, they look at each other, they point toward them, hey, and then they start walking toward them. And as they're walking toward Hiko and Samuel, they keep stopping to point and say, hey, duh, duh, duh. hey, duh, duh, duh. hey. <laughs> this was actually based off. Uh, this was actually uh, based off the skeletons from a computer game I played called Spooky Castle. That's, they literally, the skeletons really did this. Hey, dun, dun, dun. And shot fireballs out their mouth. So, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, so, and Samuel's like, well, whatever you did before, uh, you might want to do it again. <laughs> so, Samuel gets an idea, so, Hiko gets an idea. Uh, he holds his hands out toward the skeleton saying, Frozen Fury. And a big ice cream tidal wave washes away the skeletons and uh, t uh, ends up, you know, getting, tra uh, ends up carrying Hiko and Samuel all the way through the double doors into the back of the store. And that's where they end up seeing uh, where Naomi's at, um, where she's in danger. Uh, the, some of the, zomb the zombies she encountered, there's more of them. And they have her tied up to the side. They're preparing a pot uh, of boiling water and put some seasonings in it uh, in order to cook her. So, Higo and Samuel, of course, they're going to um, come to her rescue. Uh, they grab a couple of poles. Uh, and Samuel, Samuel rushes in first uh, to hit two of them into the pot, causing it to roll over. So Samuel's react. And... Um, as soon as that happens, uh, Hiko says engulfing Inferno to make the flames around the pot uh, rise up and burn the rest of the zombies to ashes. Uh, and they get they get Naomi untied and get to the electronics department. And once they kind of rest for a moment, uh, Naomi just automatically kisses Hiko on the cheek. They're like, I'll take that as a big thank you. <laughs> And, and of course they introduced themselves to Naomi and she introduced herself to them uh, and Samuel's like lucky because <laughs> she kissed Hiko <laughs> uh, it's sort of it's also a reference to uh, when me and Christina met each other um, before we actually became boyfriend and girlfriend uh, for some reason she always kissed me after like when we when we uh, just be kind of hanging out before class and talking uh, and I said, okay, I'll see you later. She always gave me a kiss there, even though we weren't dating yet. So, and that's what kind of got me wondering, does she like me? Uh-huh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so of course, uh, uh, Flora shows up trying to uh, get, the bo get everybody out of the store with the dangers, but uh, then they end up getting separated from each other due to a warp. <laughs> Chapter 4, Brownie and Emily. Uh, I, I do have a couple of shorts, Brownie and Emily, on, on the channel. Uh, check out those. Um, apparently, uh, Emily is still frustrated about the comment, you know, being called a little kitty cat. And she's, and she's working out, as Bobby Proud said about Sugar Mama, she ain't working out on the heavy bag. She says she gonna knock you out. Hey, Ma, Oscar here. Oscar! <laughs> Whoa! Like, sugar mama, let Oscar. Oh, I know what he gonna say. He goes like, ooh, 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 ow, ow, ooh, please don't hurt me, mommy. Ooh, ooh, ow, ow, gee, ooh, ow. <laughs> please don't hurt me. Please. <laughs> so, so Emily, yeah, she's she's putting. Um, she's so upset that she ends up 
breaking the heavy bag, uh, slashing, punching, and kicking, and karate chopping it. Sort of like how Captain America punched that bag off the thing in the uh, Avengers movie. <laughs> Trouble sleeping? Try to get me back in the war. Try to save it. <laughs> so, Brownie comes in, being a gentleman. Um, just tries to talk to Emily. Um, so, there's a brief um so they kind of talk for a little bit there, you know, like, you know, hey, Dashdale, you know, he didn't mean any harm. He just kind of shows off. Um, and then, you know, he, he tries to ask, uh, tries to ask Emily out, you know, he's, uh, say, I was just wondering, uh, if you'd be interested in hanging out with me outside the fire station, get the, you know, get some coffee, and maybe have a little burger over at the burger port, uh, catch a movie or something. You trying to ask me out on a date? <clears throat> Maybe. I'm not exactly your. Th She's like I'm not exactly your type of girl or any, for any or any guy like you, <laughs> would want to <a> date. <laughs> well, say Brownie. Brownie, of course, doesn't give up. Hey, I didn't give up when I was flirting with Christina. <laughs> it's pretty pretty much what this is kind of referencing uh, when uh, me. Uh, as as I as I would tell the kids in the future, how I met your mother. <laughs> so, um, uh, Emily, at, uh, they find out how old each other is. Uh, Brownie's twenty one, uh, Emily's is twenty three, and she say if she was going to date any guy, it would be an older guy. And that's that's actually what Christina told me when we first met. Is that I'm into older guys. <laughs> And Brownie says what I said back to Christina. Well, I'm not too much younger than you. And for your information, younger guys like me can mature ourselves to older yet beautiful women like you. Yeah, and of course, at first, yeah, like you say, it's not going to happen right away. Emily is playing hard to get. Or just Christina, she played hard to get to. It took a while before we started a relation there to get where we are now, obviously. Uh, he's a, uh, but she does appreciate that Brownie is, you know, treating her nice and figures, you know, okay, yeah, we, okay, we can hang out. But, this is not a date. Okay. Yes, indeed, Miss Landego. <laughs> so, yeah, and that was the same thing. Christina said, just like, because uh, I remember I asked her uh, to come with me to Whataburger uh, during my break, uh, during uh, one of the breaks I had between classes once at college. I said, You want I say, I'll take you to Whataburger? It's like, Okay, but this is not a date. And I had my fingers crossed behind my back. <laughs> Sneaky, aren't I? <laughs> so, so then uh, Brownie goes into the room where Dash still is at resting, and um, Billy and Gerald are in there with him, and they sort of look at Brownie like, mm -hmm. and literally, yes, uh, like I told you, how Christina would just randomly kiss me before I go to class. Um, it was one day she did that, and I came to class, my first class of the day, and everybody and and uh, some of the and a few of the class, few of the people in the class looked at me like she kissed you. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of kind of how they do this. Like, oh, you asked her out, didn't you? It's a date. It's a date. <laughs> So, Brownie and Emily sitting in the tree. K I S S I N G. <laughs> and of course, there's a little bit of talk and stuff about that. Um, Dashdale's still upset about what happened, you know, being swung against the wall. And uh, Mr. Fluffle, you know, he, he comes in, says a few words to them and everything. And, you know, it's just a little, little chat there about all of that. Um, but then Flora shows up because of the warp. The warp actually sent her all the way to the fire station and she's in a panic. She tells Brownie that, you know, Hiko and Samuel them are in danger. They're uh they're trapped in the in the cola bar needs to get there. And she's even upset with herself, like you know, I I you know, I thought you was in there, Brownie, but it turns out you wasn't. It's all my fault. Brown 
So Brad, you know, he gets her to calm down a bit, like, I'm gonna get them out. So, so of course, uh, it's uh, Brownie and Gerald again. They uh, go up because Dashdale is still recovering. They tell him, you know, hey, you still, your back is still hurting. <laughs> um, and then we got, so that's the fourth chapter, and I think also the third. <laughs> Fifth chapter, uh, just labeled Granny and Big Papa. Yes, I got my Granny and Big Papa in here. Now, of course, they have different names in the story, but Hiko calls them Granny and Big Papa just like I call my grandparents on my mom's side Granny and Big Papa. Uh, my grandparents on my dad's side, I call them Big Mama and Big Daddy. <laughs> So, yeah, that's is a little bit of difference between, you know, little different nicknames for the two sets of grandparents. Uh, so, uh, in the, so, yeah, this is in, matter of fact, back in the real world. Um, they're sitting, they're watching some soap operas there. Uh, I called it the Grace and the Charming, uh, sort of like the Bold and the Beautiful. <laughs> or the Young and Restless. Do, 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 do. And, yeah, I know I'm making a joke there, but I actually have great respect for soap operas. So, ser seriously, I do. Uh, because one thing Big Papa told me, I said, well, what are soap operas about? Anything. You name it, it's about it. Now, I'm not sure what complete, if, you know, how he meant that completely, but for myself, I have seen uh, elements of soap operas in other shows. Uh, Justice League series, they... Or it's like a soap opera, but so, for superheroes. Power Rangers in Space, it's like a space soap opera. So, that's why I have great respect for soap operas, and I definitely recommend, even if you don't watch the soap operas, I mean, you know, I understand, you know, everybody watches what they want to watch, but I at least encourage people to have respect for the soap opera. Even if you don't watch it, have some, have respect for it, because I can guarantee you there's something, something you're looking at is going to have an element of a soap opera in it. It's things that I that I watch, Power Rangers in Space, Justice League. Uh, matter of fact, Yu-Gi-Oh! GX was like a soap opera for me and Christina. The uh, watching the Japanese version of it uh, when we when we uh, was watching the first three seasons. We never did get to see the fourth season because the Crunchyroll gave out on us. But but yeah, it was like we were watching a soap opera. So, but but from an anime. <laughs> So, yeah, respect the soap operas. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he, they're watching the soap operas, uh, <laughs> and there's even a little funny banter about it when the commercial breaks comes on. Can't dash it. I can't believe that Grace would portray Victor like that. <laughs> yeah, she definitely fooled him. <laughs> sort of a hint to something that will happen later in the series. Also, can't dash it. Three words, can't dash it. Um, that, that actually is something my granny said. She has said that before, but she didn't, but it wasn't something that she said a lot, though. But she has said it before. Um, yeah, uh, it's sort of, it's, it, like I say, because I'm trying to, like I say, I keep the books PG. Uh, so it's sort of, and there is, and I don't have any swearing in the book. Uh, just letting y'all know there's no swearing in these books. So that is kind of my way of censorship there, <laughs> using that. And I even put hyphens in it, so yeah, that, <laughs> uh, yeah, so it wouldn't be taken any other way. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, a little banter about the soap opera, and then a big buffalo shows up, giant buffalo to be exact, a giant golden buffalo, about as big as the fence. Uh, and this was a dream I had years ago uh, as a little kid, uh, where my big papa in the dream. Uh, there was a buffalo, a giant buffalo in the yard, and Big Papa climbed out the window into the backyard to go fight the buffalo. And my granny was say, ah, be careful fighting that buffalo. <laughs> and she does say it here in the story. Yeah, uh, Big Papa goes to, uh, he get Big Papa goes to get his, uh, walk, uh, walking pole. So, um, me and Big Papa we used to take walks when I was a little kid. Uh, we had walking sticks. He had a walking pole, and I had a wooden walking stick uh, that we would use, you know, in case we had to defend ourselves against, you know, like, like say, if a dog come at us or something like that, or, either, or you know, anything, you know, in general, we use those sticks to defend ourselves. Uh, so he goes to get 
a walking pole. Um, and yeah, he's like, um, he's like, I'm gonna go fight that buffalo and get him out of our yard and hopefully the neighborhood. And she's like, God, good God almighty, please be careful fighting that buffalo. And they do say their names in here. Uh, Big Papa's name is actually Archie. Uh, and Granny's is Esther. So, in, in the story anyway. Um, so, yeah, Big Papa's out there. He's fighting the buffalo. The buffalo swings him into his garden. Uh, Big, they, uh, Big Papa gets up. And he's like, I didn't. He's like, you notice he's a smash. And Big Papa actually has a garden in real life. Uh, I don't know if he still has it, but I know he did when we were growing up because he, we've, uh, he's shown it to me and my cousins and stuff like that. All the stuff he grew in it. Uh, it's a little small garden now, but he said, but he's real proud of it. And he said, uh, he said, I know you did not just mess up my garden, you golden horn Goliath behemoth. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a week to grow those tomatillos and coyote squad. Don't even get me started with the Vidalia onions. <laughs> Little reference to where I work in produce. <laughs> so yeah, turns out, um, turns out he's dreaming. Uh, and when he wakes up, uh, Granny tells him that Hiko and Samuel have not made it back yet. They're still in Yubiko. Uh, so they gotta go up there and get him <laughs> before before their mom before Hiko's mom comes to pick him up. Yep, and where I'm at now, chapter the sixth chapter, um, is basically um, where Hiko wakes up and he finds Naomi, and uh, they just sort of get to talking with each other a little bit about toy, uh, cause they get distracted by the toy owl. So, and then after that, yeah, things are gonna pick back up again, you know, um, clock, uh, leading into the climax stuff like that. So, um. Yeah, pretty much just gonna stop it right there. Um, yeah, still gotta finish up chapter six as well as the rest of the book. And hope y'all like what you heard and everything so far. That's what I got. Um, definitely be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And buy some of our favorite books as well as support us on Patreon. Just like EJ the Supreme has done. Um, definitely. Uh, so yeah. Take his example and become a patron for yourself so you can get yourself a shout out like him as well as some other perks. And while is it that you know you support us and we and you get some perks, so as well as and also early access to these videos as well. Uh videos like this one. Um so yep, uh we're gonna end it there because my camera's getting really tired and on the last battery sale. <laughs> Cause like I say, I did a video before this one, so yeah. Pretty much burnt the camera out <laughs> for today. So, uh, we'll see y'all in the next video. Take care, everybody.